Hey, welcome back. We are about to jump into another English lesson. Now, this week, my goal is to help you with your English fluency, specifically with your confidence in your own English fluency. I'm going to give you five tips, five tips that will completely transform your English fluency and help you move to the next level. Are you ready? Well then I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right, let's get started with tip number one. The very first thing to help you again, speak English with confidence is to immerse yourself in English media. Now I'm going to break down this tip a little bit more, but I want to say it again. Immerse yourself in English media. We are living in a time where the internet, cell phones, computers, all of these technological advancements have connected us in ways that did not exist 20, 30, 40, 50, even 60 years ago. And that means that for you as an English learner, this is the best time to take your English to the next level. You can do this because the internet is available to you. That's how you're watching me. So in order to speak English with confidence, you must immerse yourself in English media. Let me break it down some more for you. You have to surround yourself with English books, movies, TV shows and music to expose yourself to the language consistently. In our last lesson, the previous week, when I told you the story during story time, I got another one for you later on. I mentioned how I learned the importance of consistency. The same is true for this tip. You have to consistently on a consistent basis, be immersing yourself in the English language. You need to immerse yourself in the culture as well. So maybe you're wondering to yourself, Tiffany, how can I do this? I live in a country where I'm actually the only one learning English. Or maybe you live in a country where you have friends trying to learn English, but there's no other native English speakers around you. Let me tell you this. Even if you're in that situation, you can still immerse yourself in English. Get out your cell phone. If you have one, get your computer, whatever device you have, where you access the internet, get that device. Find a podcast you like, find YouTube channels, not just with English teachers like myself. I'm happy you're watching the video or listening to this lesson, but find other videos on YouTube about topics you're interested in music, food, technology, whatever you're interested in, but find a channel that is run by a native English speaker and watch it. Immerse yourself in it. Even if you don't understand everything in the beginning, at the beginning, you might not understand every word, every expression they're using, but over time, you'll start to understand more. We're talking about helping you speak English with confidence. You need to immerse yourself in the language and the internet is now giving you the ability to do this, even if you're not living in a native English speaking country. So number one, tip number one, immerse yourself every day, be watching something or listening to something or even reading something in English. Enjoy it though. Have fun with it. All right. Tip number one. Now let's move on to tip number two. Again, we're talking about helping you speak English with confidence. Tip number two, practice speaking with native English speakers. Now you're probably thinking to yourself once again, Tiffany, how I I'm not in a situation where I have access to native English speakers. My friend, don't you worry. Don't worry. Let me explain this tip a little bit more. 
It's important to find conversation partners or join language exchange programs to practice speaking with native English speakers. You can engage in conversations on various topics. Now you might be in the situation where you cannot afford to pay for a tutor. Again, going back to what I said earlier, my friend, you do have access to the internet. Go online, find Facebook groups, Facebook forums, go online and find different websites where people are chatting, having conversations and join the conversations. You don't have to start out with, I'm sorry, I'm an English learner, or I'm sorry, my English is not good. No, just hop. You see that if you're watching the video, hop right into the conversation. That's how you will improve your English confidence. People don't care if your English is the best or if you make mistakes, just get involved with the conversation. People will be interested in what you have to say. Now, the important thing is when you're entering these conversations, make sure the conversations are about topics you're actually interested in. If you don't like politics, don't, don't join a politics forum, but maybe you're a gamer, right? Maybe you like video games, or maybe you're an individual who enjoys talking about history, join forums, join groups where these topics are being discussed. And what's going to happen is you're going to develop relationships. You're going to develop friendships. And over time, you'll start speaking more with certain individuals in these groups. And you might actually say, Hey, you guys want to hop onto a zoom call? Let's actually see each other. Let me tell you a quick story. This is not part of story time. Don't worry. Story time is coming later, but this happened. So in my Academy, I run the speak English with Tiffany Academy. And again, you are welcome to join our family. The link is in the description, but in my Academy, I have watched my students become best friends. I have watched students travel to other countries to meet each other. And they literally are now best friends. They've met each other's families. Why? Because online they were interacting with each other. Now the same can happen with a native English speaker. If your goal is simply to get to know them, this is a tip I want to give you in conjunction. In addition to this tip, when you are speaking with native English speakers, remember we are humans too. We know that you want to learn our language and we know again, I'm a teacher, so it's totally okay. My position in this relationship is as your teacher, but when you're trying to have conversations with other native English speakers, remember the other person on the screen, if you're having a video call, the other person on the opposite side of your texting is a real person. So they don't want to feel like, Oh, you really don't care about me. You just want me because of my English. Just remember, we're all human beings. And the moment you start caring about them as a person, that's when you'll start developing deep relationships and will actually help your English fluency. I experienced this many times when I lived in Korea and I had so many conversations with other English teachers saying like, man, there are some students we just click with. Why? Because they treat me like I'm a person. I, I'm not just someone that can give them what they need but they care about me. And I've developed some close relationships with students of mine who were students initially, but are now literally very close friends. So again, this tip, I want to help you your goal. Yes. I know you want to speak English with confidence, but with this tip, in order to practice speaking with native speakers, care about the native speaker. Unless you're paying for a tutor, it's totally okay. In that relationship, they are your teacher. They are your tutor. But if you're going to these free platforms and trying to start conversations, just keep in mind, they are people and they want to get to know you just like you'd like to get to know them. You got me. Excellent. All right, let's move on to number three. Number three, tip number three is listen to English podcasts. When I say you have so many podcasts, totally free podcasts, at your disposal, ready for you. You can again, take out your cell phone or on your computer, listen to these podcasts totally for free. 
Now, again, you already know about my podcast, the Speak English with Tiffany podcast. Of course, I think it's a wonderful podcast. Many students agree, and I hope it helps you. But I'm not just speaking about podcasts run by English teachers. I'm speaking about podcasts run by native English speakers where they're just speaking about topics that they're interested in. This is so important. Again, it starts with you knowing your interests. What are you interested in? And then go online, go to your phone. If you have a podcast app, look for podcasts about that topic and start listening. Here's the thing. Listen to English podcasts on a variety of topics to improve your listening skills and expose yourself to different accents, vocabulary, and expressions. We are talking about helping you speak English with confidence, but the way you start speaking with confidence is also by improving your listening skills. You'll gain confidence in your ability to comprehend what is being said, and then you'll apply the patterns that you're hearing, the words that you're hearing being used, and the expressions which will inevitably help you improve your English speaking ability. Makes sense, right? Now again, it's important to find podcasts that are related to topics that you are interested in. You don't want to find podcasts about random things because you're not interested in random things. So find podcasts that are really about topics you are interested in. And these podcasts will help you improve your listening skills. If that makes sense, I want you to shake your head. There you go. I love it. I love it. All right. Now I want us to move on to number four tip. Number four, another very important tip. If your desire is to speak English with confidence, you need to write in English daily. Listen, you need to write in English daily. Now I'm going to show those who are watching this lesson. I know those are listening, cannot see what I'm about to do, but those that are watching this lesson right behind me, you'll see tons of notebooks right here. These are just some of my notebooks and I have tons of notebooks on the right side of me. And also in my work bag, in my office closet, I have tons of notebooks everywhere. Why? Because I write a lot. Now I write down things related to this business. How can I help more English learners? How can I make better lessons? How can I dot, dot, dot in an effort to help you reach your English goals? I write things down. There's something that happens when you write things down. It helps your brain process information and it also helps you retain information. So for you as an English learner, set aside time each day to write in English, whether it's journaling, writing essays or practicing grammar exercises, seek feedback from native English speakers. If possible. Remember the goal of this practice is not to get every single word that you write corrected. Is the grammar right? No. The goal is to help you process your thoughts and produce them on paper in English. It's interesting, right? I'm helping you speak English with confidence, but the last two tips have been about listening and writing, not speaking. The reason is because of the way our brains work in order to speak with confidence. The very first thing that must happen in your brain is your thoughts being organized. So you have to process your thoughts. So listening to other people processing their thoughts actually helps you learn how to process your thoughts better in English. The same is true for this tip. Writing in English in order to write something down on a piece of paper, you have to process information. What do I want to say? What do I want to write about my day today? In order to write, I must first organize my thoughts. So for you, my friend, your goal is to speak English with confidence. I'm telling you right now, if starting today, you begin writing, it doesn't matter the amount of time. Remember I said last week, consistency and just doing it. 
as long as you pick, it could be two minutes. It could be five minutes. It might be 15. It's up to you, but do it every day. Just write what happened during your day, write something that you heard that really impressed you. I guarantee later on what you wrote is going to come out of your mouth because you've already processed it in your brain. Makes sense, right? Excellent. All right, here we go. Tip number five, another important tip. Here we go. Take advantage of language learning apps. Listen, I am telling you the time that we are living in right now, you have everything literally being put on a plate for you. Meaning it's so easy to access things that back in the day were very challenging to access. I remember when I was learning Korean at that time, the only thing really available was Rosetta stone. Some of you may remember, and some of you might not remember what Rosetta stone actually was. It was the most popular language learning program at that time. At that time, we didn't have these amazing, uh, cell phones with all of these language learning apps. My friend download a language learning app and use it. Now, of course, you know, I also have an app, the English with Tiffany app, and I encourage everyone to download the app. The app is free to download. But why do I encourage you to use this app again? You might not. That's totally okay. There might be another app that will be helpful for you. Go for it. But why do people like myself, teachers or other individuals create these language learning apps? Because we know how important it is to be consistently engaging with the language. You always have your phone with you. So when you're sitting on the bus or you're traveling somewhere, or you just have a few moments, you can open your phone, open the app and even for five minutes, practice something. So whatever app you choose again, it might not be my app English with Tiffany and that's okay. But if you find another app, make sure you're using it. So let me explain this a little bit more, a little bit more use language learning apps. Again, like the one I mentioned English with Tiffany to reinforce your language skills, practice on the go and discover new ways to improve your fluency. My team and I, for the app that I've created again, hopefully you'll download it. The link is in the description. We work continuously to figure out ways to help English learners. Hey, this is a good practice um, application. We can help the students really start using on a regular basis or, Hey, let's add this to the app, this video lesson to help students. Why? Because our entire goal is to help you achieve your English goals. And the same is true for every other language learning app. You have the opportunity to download multiple apps that will help you on your English journey. All right. Now, again, I have practice lessons after every one of my video lessons. And for those listening to the podcast, you can practice in the app. Why? I want you to reach your goals. And so do other English teachers and people that have created language learning apps. So use the apps. They will help you so much. Now, I hope you enjoyed these tips before we end our lesson today. I want to let you know if you're watching this in real time or listening to this, I am going to be doing live classes on YouTube every month, once a month, full English class. We are going to have a great time. Words, expressions, American culture. You'll see video clips from my life and so much more. My goal is to help you improve your English this year. I want you to go to the next level. So don't miss out on these live English classes. Go to my YouTube page. You'll see when they're announced and you can join these live classes. They are specifically for the members of my YouTube channel. And again, the first one in January is going to be open to everyone. I want to see you there. Don't miss it. Hope you enjoyed the lesson as always. Remember to speak English. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. Hey, let's do it again. Story time. Hey, hey, hey. I said it's story time. All right. I have a very nice story for you today. You know, a few weeks ago, it's probably been a month now. I was working at a Starbucks. So I like to work at Starbucks sometimes when I'm trying to create new lessons for you and organize information. So I was working at a Starbucks, not well, about 30 minutes or so from my office. And 
I normally like to get a uh, chai tea latte. I don't drink coffee, but I like chai tea and I add a little almond milk. So I was getting ready. My mouth was watering. I was standing in line about to get my chai tea latte. And I noticed a woman that was on my left side. She was probably around my mom's age, right? So she looked good. Um, but I was like, okay, she's a little older. So let me let her get in front of me. So I looked to her and I said, oh ma'am, you can go first. She's like, oh no, baby, I'm okay. I said, no, no, it's totally okay. You are welcome to go first. So there were two lines open and I let her go to the first one. So I went to the second one. And I was telling the other individual my order and I kind of overheard that the first cash register actually wasn't working. So I noticed that the woman was just standing there next to me. So I stopped my order and I looked at her. She said, oh baby, it's okay. I'll just wait for you to make your order because I can't place my order on this side. Their register is closed. And the thought came to me, huh, maybe I should just buy her drink for her. There was no reason, just, hey, it's nice to do something nice for other people. It was around Thanksgiving time. So I looked at her and I said, you know what? I got you today. Tell her what you want and I'll pay for it. And her face just lit up. She was like, no. I was like, ma'am, it is totally okay. I would be more than happy to buy your drink. She said, oh, thank you so much. So she made her, placed her order. And of course that led us to have a conversation. So she looked at me and she was like, man, you know, it's so nice to meet people and just have conversations. And you know, when someone does something nice for you, she said, I, I really love doing nice things for people too. And I was looking at her as she was talking and I was like, man, this lady is super nice. And I would have never known this about her, her being so nice if we hadn't run into each other in this line. But she continued to tell me as we were waiting for our drinks to come up, she said, you know, my husband died 40 years ago. Now remember, I said she looked about to be about the age of my mother. My mother and father have been married for 50 years, about 50 years. And she said, my husband died 40 years ago. And of course I started calculating in my head and said, man, Lord, this woman lost her husband when she was either in her twenties or thirties. And I thought about what that would be like to lose a loved one. And she continued talking to me and she said, you know, God has been good to me. And, um, and she really just progressed to tell me all about her life and how she, she worked at different companies and she didn't have a college education, but God had blessed her to get jobs. And she was just telling me how her life had worked out. And she told me about her house. She was basically telling me her life story. And as I was standing there listening to her, something that God brought to my mind, I want to share with you. We never know what someone else is going through. We never know what someone else might need. At that moment, I could tell that this lady needed someone to talk to. This lady really wanted to have some sort of interaction. She lived alone in the midst of her telling me her life story. She told me she lived alone. And she said, this moment right here, just you being able to speak to me has brightened my day. So I want to remind you, you never know what someone is going through and you never know how a simple smile, a simple acknowledgement, speaking to someone saying hello can change their day. As we move throughout this year, I want us, yes, you and me together, I want us to try to make a bigger impact on the world. Wherever you live, wherever you are right now, every day I want you to wake up and think to yourself, today I want to bring joy to someone's life. Whether it be by smiling at them, whether it be by saying a kind word, whatever it might be, this year I want us together to impact the world in a positive way. Let's meet somebody and bring joy to their lives. I hope you enjoyed this story and I'll talk to you in the next lesson.